everyone. Welcome to the Career Internship and Co-op Search for Engineers presentation. Today we are going to be talking about everything related to your search, whether you're looking for an internship, a co-op, or a full-time job. No matter what you're looking for, the steps in your process towards that search is pretty much going to be the same. So whether you're looking for your first internship or co-op, or you're about to graduate and you're ready to look for a full-time job, the, the types of things you do to get yourself ready and to be very strategic in your search is going to pretty much be the same, no matter what you're looking for. So we're going to jump right in and get started. So what is in it for you? What is this conversation going to do for you today? You're going to be able to understand what your search timeline is going to look like. You'll walk away with a networking plan of action. So you will actually have tangible networking ideas to take away from today's presentation. You'll be able to create networking next steps for your search. You'll be able to find co-op information on our website. I'm going to show you guys how to, how to navigate that today. You will identify up to 10 employers in your target industry. So you'll be able to come up with 10 companies that you would like to start reaching out to. You will leave empowered on how to navigate your job internship or co-op search with proven steps for success. Um, career competencies, we want to highlight this today because this is something that employers look for. This is something that they expect from candidates. Uh, regardless of if it's an internship or co-op. So today we are going to focus on some career competencies um, that will better help you towards your career development. Competencies are transferable and valued no matter what industry you are in. People um, people's knowledge, behaviors that lead them to be successful in a job or throughout per, or throughout pur purposeful work. Careers and environments change all the time and individuals need to be able to understand and adapt to those changes. You will use competencies in your career to promote overall well-being, um, ad ability to adapt to change, as well as give individuals a sense of purpose. And employers all over the world highly value and look for candidates who have competencies that they need for their organization. So that's why we want to highlight this today. And um, the career competencies are outlined here. You can see there's technology, teamwork, career and self-development, professionalism, critical thinking, communication, leadership, equity and, and inclusion. And these are the core competencies that all employers around the globe look for in candidates. Today, we're really going to be honing in on critical thinking and communication competencies. So as a result of this presentation today, you will have increased your critical thinking skills and learn proper communication. So I just wanted to highlight that for you all, since this is such a core focus for employers. And I just wanted to sort of introduce this concept since this is what employers do look for. <clears throat> so first we're gonna kind of drill down and talk about internships and co-ops. By now, everyone has probably heard that you should be getting an internship or a co-op before you graduate, particularly in the engineering industry. This is something that engineering employers really do look for and expect from candidates. And so, um, Today, we're going to look at sort of the benefits to internships and co-ops and why you should be doing them before you graduate. So why are they important? Just take a second and to yourself, think about why is it that, that these are so pushed? Why is it that an employer wants you to have an internship or a co-op before you graduate? So pause the video and take just a couple of minutes and think about this. So the vast majority of employers, over 95% said that experience is, is the number one factor in hiring decisions and nearly half wanted new grads to have experience in the form of internships or co-ops before graduation. And so this is very telling that um, one of the biggest reasons to do an internship or a co-op is so that you do have experience. Also, networking is the name of the game. Um, Networking is required for a job search. It's required for an internship and a co-op search. And we're going to talk a lot today about networking and what you can be doing um, to start networking very early on. And the other benefit to doing an internship and a co-op is that you naturally 
in those experiences, you are networking, you're meeting coworkers, you're meeting people who are very established with the company and people who potentially might be your, your full-time colleagues one day if everything goes well. So networking is, is, is huge and it's happening very organically if you do an internship or a co-op. Another big reason to do an internship at a co-op is you have the chance to have a to potentially a higher starting salary upon graduation. Experience is the number one thing employers look for. And in order to negotiate yet that starting salary for that first job that you have after you finish college, you've got to have experience under your belt. So in order to have that negotiation power, you have to have that experience. And the internship in a co-op is going to give you that experience. It's going to allow you to leverage um, you know, that negotiation conversation around your starting salary and have sort of ammunition to ask for a, a higher starting salary because you've got experience. So some perks of an internship, you're going to typically get paid more than you would if it was just a part time job. It's going to allow you to get experience and really develop those engineering skills that you're learning in your classes. You're going to get to meet professionals in the field. We've already talked about networking. You're going to get to test drive a career and see whether or not a particular industry within engineering is right for you. Sometimes you can learn, you know, that, hey, this is actually, you know, manufacturing is not what I thought it was, and maybe I'm going to do something else instead. Or you might solidify that, oh, yeah, I love manufacturing, and this is what I want to do. That's what an internship can really do for you. It gets you that chance to test drive your career before you're stuck in a career and can't get out of it. Sometimes um, you have the opportunity to learn to earn elective credit. Most engineering students are not earning any credit towards an internship. There are there are some who choose to do the academic credit internship through our office, but most engineering students just choose to do the internship for experience because there is not an option to get any engineering credit when it comes to internships. Potential jobs, um, a potential job offer after graduation. So you can absolutely sometimes, you know, land that first time job um, having done an internship with that company. I see that happen a lot with students where they'll do an internship or a co-op and then they get a job offer from the same company. And so that's always fantastic um, if that can happen. So internship eligibility, as far as the U UNC Charlotte is concerned, um, there's really no special requirements because you're not doing it for course credit. So you can start after your first year if you want. I would say most students typically start their internships after sophomore year. Um, and some departments offer credit, some don't. As far as engineering goes, there are no departments that offer credit. And so when we talk about some departments, we're referring to departments outside of the College of Engineering. So like I said before, you're going to be doing your internship for experience. You can still put it on your resume. It's just you're not going to get course credit for it um, and it won't be on your transcript. The co-op program is a little bit different. There is some eligibility surrounding this, so you do have to have a 2.5 GPA, be full-time student status and in good standing, and have completed 30 credit hours if you arrived as a first-year student at UNC Charlotte, or if you're a transfer, 15 credit hours. So between the two of those, um, that just kind of lets you know that most co-op students have to be at sophomore standing, um, and I would say most students do start their co-op after sophomore year. You want to squeeze it in before you start senior design that last year, and so that's why we really do encourage students, if you're going to do a co-op, you want to start it as early as possible so that you can get your three rotations in before senior design, and I'll talk about that in more detail in just a second. So some logistics of the co-op program. Um, it's always the work you're doing is always going to be related to your major and it's always paid. So typical co-op pay is anywhere from 18 to $28 an hour. So it pays pretty well. You do have to get approval from your academic department before you can go start working at your co-op because they have to ensure that it relates to your major. There is a special co-op advisor for every department within the College of Engineering. <clears throat> and I'll show you guys a second in just a second how you can find the co-op advisor list on the website. You do get transcript notation, so your co-op will be listed on your transcript. 
and you get to keep your full time student status, even when you are working at your co op. So when you're doing a co op rotation, you're not taking any classes on campus. You're simply working full time at your co op. So typically 40 hours a week. And the good thing about all of that is, is even though you're working off campus full time and you're not taking classes, you are still considered a student at UNC Charlotte during that time. So you can still live on campus if need be. You can still have a meal plan. Um, you're just not going to be paying that full tuition during that time. Um, your financial aid does sometimes get impacted. So what we recommend is you, that you meet with your financial aid counselor prior to your co-op. So that way you can learn about all of the nuances relevant for you specifically. Um, you will be working with the same employer for three rotations and you can do your rotations. On, you do your rotations, rotations on an alternating basis. What that means is you don't do like a fall and a spring back to back at the company because that would mean you'd be gone for a whole academic year. You do it alternating. So if you worked a fall semester, then you would come back and do classes in the spring, and then you could go back to your co-op the following summer. We typically see students usually do two summer rotations and one fall or spring. It's okay to do a spring summer back to back rotation or a summer fall back to back rotation. You just can't do fall and spring back to back. Um, and you have to enroll in the co-op by the co-op deadline that we have on the co-op website. And I'll show you guys that in just a little bit. And then you have to enroll in your co-op each semester you work. So just like you register for classes every semester, you also register your co-op every semester. And after each co-op rotation, you will enroll in a one hour co-op seminar course through your academic department, and that you register for yourself. We don't register you for that. The Career Center registers you for the co-op rotation, but not the co-op seminar course. Um, some perks to doing the co-op are that, like, like I said, you get to keep your full-time student, student status while you're working. You can earn credit towards your PE license. So if you're thinking about becoming a professional engineer one day, you can actually earn credit towards that up to one year towards your PE license. You're going to always be paid. You can save money while you're working at your co-op because you're not going to be paying tuition during that time. You get longer experience with the company. So because you're doing three full-time work rotations with the same company, you get to see things for a longer period of time than maybe if you just did a summer internship. So a lot of times students will rotate into different departments within their company for each co-op rotation, or they'll be with the same department, but they might get to see a project to fruition because they get to be there for longer. It's an inc incomparable experience. Students who do co-op express that it's one of the best decisions they make when they were in college. Um, and you do have the potential for that job, after, jo job offer after graduation. It's not always a guarantee, but if everything goes well, and the stars align and the company is looking to hire you full time. I have seen that happen a lot with our co-op students. The one downside I would say is that it could prolong graduation by a semester or max two semesters. Um, but students never indicate that that was that big of a deal because the, of the amazing experience they get from doing a co-op. I want to show you guys the co-op website now. So you can see here on our website, career.charlotte.edu slash experience slash co-op. You have here the whole rundown of how the co-op program works. We have this really cool, helpful video that you should definitely watch. And then we outline the student eligibility that I've kind of briefly touched on, all of the details that you need to understand specific to the College of Engineering, including that you are required to meet with Miss Linda Thurman as part of the process before you enroll. She's going to help make sure you get all your ducks in a row and all of that sort of thing. And then down here, you can see you have the list of co-op advisors for the different um, departments within engineering as well as um, the co-op how to enroll information. So it's going to give you the step-by-step -step process. You start everything in Hire and Niner. There is a co-op approval form that is required, and that's what you'll have your co-op um, advisor sign. <clears throat> Sorry, I was just double checking. It was still recording. And so, 
Um, the co-op approval form is here and you will outline each semester that you're working and each semester um, that you'll be co-oping. And you're going to have your co-op advisor sign that and you will submit all of that through Hire Niner. But this basically just gives you all the information, the deadlines for each semester um, and some information about financial aid. We also have some helpful FAQs in here. So I definitely recommend if you are thinking about co-op, then check this website out because it pretty much answers everything you would need to know. So I want you to stop the pause the video for just a minute and visit the co-op website. And I want you to watch the co-op video. It's a pretty brief video. I think it's only about three minutes long, but that video definitely gives you a quick rundown of everything I discussed in more of a visual, a more visually nice way. So go ahead and pause the video and take a second to review the co-op website and look at the co-op video, particularly if you're thinking about doing a co-op. Okay, we're gonna jump back in. So how do I actually find an internship or a co-op? And this is also true if you're looking for a full-time job. So everything I'm about to tell you applies to internship search, co-op search, as well as full-time job search. So one year before your desired role, and don't worry, if you already are, let's say you are three months away from graduation um, and you're just now seeing this presentation, that's okay you can still do some catch up but ideally you will have started your search for whether it's an internship co-op or job about a year before you're ready to begin working the first thing you have to do before you can really do anything is create a create a resume so that is your first piece of homework after this presentation is go make a resume if you don't already have one we are here to help you so you are not in this alone so definitely visit the career center um come see your career coaches, come to our drop-ins. I'm going to give you all that information today, but create, create a resume. I want to show you this website right here. This is our career community page for engineering, manufacturing, and energy. Lots of good, helpful information on here. Kind of tells you some of the different subgroups within the engineering career community, different um, national associations that you should be looking at, and a lot of these are on-campus student orgs as well. We also have some job and internship search websites on here for you, um, as well as news and notes. And then right here, you'll notice we have a different example for every department, for every major within engineering at UNC Charlotte. So if you're a computer engineering major, construction management, mechanical, civil systems, whatever your major is, we have a resume for you here that you can look at and review and kind of get some tips on how to put together your resume. I'm not going to get into resumes today, um, but I just wanted to kind of show you that to kind of help you um, get started with creating a resume, creating a resume, because that's the first thing you have to do. Um, I would also recommend to make a LinkedIn profile, M create it, have it critiqued by our office, um, and you can get some helpful tips on creating a LinkedIn profile at our career guide. Um, it's best to download this guide. And if you click the arrow button here, you'll see the career guide is here. And if you if the, the if you click that arrow button, it will make it larger. Um, and on page, I believe it starts on page 12. You'll notice here we have lots of helpful information about creating LinkedIn, how to network on LinkedIn, and everything you would need to know. Um, how to reach out to people, just some tips and tricks. We even have a sample blurb you can use to reach out to people. So go ahead and make it a LinkedIn profile if you haven't already, and that's something you would do at least a year out from your search. Um, you also want to start identifying your target employers. So 10 to 15 to 20 companies that you're really interested in that you want to start networking with. <clears throat> you also want to identify UNC Charlotte alumni or industry leaders and start setting up informational interviewing. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. And then contact three to four people a month via the form of networking using the LinkedIn alumni tool, which I'm also going to show you here in just a second. So this is a year out. These are the types of things you can be doing. So I want to, again, we're going to have do a little activity, and I want you to go ahead and create your career internship or co-op search plan. And this is in the form of a spreadsheet. 
And this is going to be where you go to log everything you've done, logging people you've spoken to. It's going to be where you create your target list of companies. And so in a second, I want you to pause the video and go ahead and make this spreadsheet for yourself. You'll see here within the spreadsheet, you are going to have basically a list of all of your professional communications that you have with people in industry. So you're going to put the person's name, their contact information. If they have a, a LinkedIn URL, you can include that here. What is their title? When did you reach out to them? Maybe when do you plan on speaking to them or when did you talk to them? Um, you'll also notice here, did they mention any, any current opportunities at their organization? And then maybe some notes from your conversation. So this is going to be what's going to keep you really organized. You'll see here, I also have a list how, of how to put together your target company list. So you want to aim for at least 15 companies that you have an interest in. And right now you may be going, well, I don't really know what companies I want to work for. That's where you can go and start really researching companies on Glassdoor, on LinkedIn, getting to know what who they are, what they're about. Do we have alumni that work there? And this is where you're going to put your list together. And from here, you'll see, do they have any positions on their website? Are there any UNC Charlotte alumni there? And who's the point of contact that I plan to reach out to from that company? And so this is going to give you an opportunity to really start getting yourself organized towards your networking plan. So I want you to pause the video and go ahead and start to create that for yourself. I'll just, I'm going to pause for just a second to let you see this again so that you can pause the video and start to create your checklist for yourself. Okay. So also a year out, before you're looking for before your desired position, um, you're going to start looking at position descriptions for industries that interest you. And so what the help the really best place to do this is through looking at jobs like on LinkedIn or on Hire and Niner and starting to identify themes that you see from those position position descriptions. So pay attention to what skills are they looking for? What engineering specific technical skills do they want? And start to identify if you have any gaps in those skills. You can utilize things like LinkedIn Learning or Coursera to help you start to develop some of those skills that maybe you're, you feel like you're lacking. Or you can also look at your program of study for your major to see, okay, am I going to have a class in XYZ moving forward so that you know you'll be able to fill in those gaps. And identify at least three technical experiences, whether it's through a class assignment, projects, or maybe something you did to teach yourself. And then start to identify those three technical experiences that you can start talking about with employers. So when you attend a career fair or a meetup, these are technical experiences that you can really speak to, and they're items from your resume that you can elaborate on. Attend career development events hosted by our office and the engineering department in the College of Engineering. There are so many things that happen throughout the year. So there are tons of employers that come to campus every fall. You have the Connect the connection day, which used to be called the engineering picnic that happens usually every September or October. The construction department does an internship fair. The civil engineering department does their own little fair. Um, there are tons of ways to get immersed by, with employers here on campus. Our office hosts the large fall career fair, as well as the spring career fair and the STEM career fair. So there's really no excuse to not get in front of, in front of an employer. And then we have tons of career meetups and that sort of thing that are led by industry folks. So start to really immerse yourself in these events that are happening on campus. Um, if you are an F1 international stu student, it's important to start attending ISSO's web workshops about CPT and OPT so that you're familiar with what's required of you. So just being aware of all that a year out is going to be is going to set you up for success. So six months before your role, 
start applying to three to five positions a week where you meet at least 50% of the qualifications. Attend as many of our recruiting events as you can. So I'll show you here the events page. This is where you can filter by career community. So you can actually filter engineering, manufacturing, and energy. You can also filter by event category. So if you want to go to a career fair, meetups, career treks, which is a visit to a company, info sessions, practice interviews, networking events, panels, it's all here for you. So this is where you can go and start to identify um, events that you should be attending. And then um, make sure you're attending those those career fairs they only happen certain times in the semester and then once they happen in the semester that's it for the semester you know so don't make sure you don't miss these things and then of six months out it's important to go ahead and start have your having cover letters looked at by the career center again you can come for drop-ins for those drop-ins are monday through friday from 10 to 3 and you don't have to have an appointment for that also, it's going to be important six months out to continue to network with established relationships. Um, create a job search spreadsheet like we talked about and track applications. So in addition to your contacts list that you're going to keep track of of who you've spoken to, you would also want to make a tab and keep track of everywhere you've applied. So anywhere you've already had an interview or anywhere you've submitted an application, save the job description somewhere because sometimes companies will take those down and then you might get called for an interview and then you can't find the job description. So save that as well, but keep that spreadsheet going so you can see where you've applied, when you need to follow up, um, and it will also help you see your progress and how hard you've been working. Attend those industry related events and especially those engineering specific events. If you're an international student, you can also visit My Visa Jobs or OPT Nation to find F1 friendly hiring um, employers. Three to six months before your desired role, continue everything you've been doing, and then you're going to want to start practicing your interview skills. So practicing behavior based interviewing with big interview is going to be very helpful big interview is our online mock interview software, you can even use this after you graduate. You will log in with your Niner net credentials to use this, you can watch yourself, you can select industry specific questions, you can uh, record your your responses and even share that with your career coach. I would be practicing on big interview at least one hour per week in that three month window before your desired role. You want to conduct two practice interviews with an actual person, so you can do that either with a career coach or an employer in our office. And then start using Glassdoor and your network to identify specific employer questions to practice towards your interview. Get your professional attire ready. We have a professional clothing closet in our office. You can come and, and pick out um, interview attire that you might need or career fair attire. So definitely check that out. There is no, you know, requirements um, for, you know, monetary need or anything like that to, to utilize the clothing closet. And you can come during our drop-ins um, to select clothing from the clothing closet. Um, and so you can visit the website here to get more information about this. Um, but this is an amazing initiative that we have available to you and we get lots of really great stuff donated to the clothing closet. Um, and there's you don't and you get to keep it. You don't have to return it and there's no cost associated. You also want to start practicing salary negotiation. Um, you can actually practice that in big interview or with your career coach. This is uh, can be a sort of a tricky topic. Um, and so I definitely encourage you to visit our website about this and come see your career coach when it comes to salary negotiation, because a lot of times people don't realize they should be negotiating their salary. Um, and so that's something we can definitely help you with. All right, so we're going to pause again for another activity. I want you to pause the video and identify three events where you could be attending per month for the next two months. If you want to even go ahead and plan for a few months out from that, that's awesome. But for this activity, I want you to think about the next two months, identify three events from our events page here that you can attend. You might choose to just do general events or you might choose to filter by engineering, manufacturing and energy, but choose three events, 
either meetups, career tracks, career fairs, whatever it might be per month for the next two months that you can attend to aid in your search efforts. Go ahead and put these events on your calendar and go ahead and RSVP for these events and hire a Niner. So pause the video and proceed with this activity. <clears throat> so as far as your job internship search and internship and co-op search go, I always tell students, you know, they're always like, where do I look for these things? A lot of times people know about, you know, Glassdoor, Indeed, uh, LinkedIn, but I definitely encourage you to look at also Hire a Niner. Not everything is in Hire a Niner, but, but definitely that's a really good starting point. That's where employers go to post specific to UNC Charlotte. So you don't want to miss Hire a Niner as part of your search. So company websites are also good, but your online search is only, you know, the tip of the iceberg. Um, networking is truly, truly the name of the game. I can't emphasize this enough. I like to show this graphic because this shows you the direction in which most people tend to look for jobs, but then the direction in which most employers tend to look for candidates. And so you'll notice here, employers really do a lot more networking when it comes to looking for candidates. But most people just start by looking on job websites, right? They apply on LinkedIn or Indeed, um, but that's only the tip of the iceberg. There's this thing called the hidden job market. And so what you see posted online accounts for only about 20 to 30 percent of jobs that are actually available. So that's where networking is going to be so important. It's important to think about the 60, 30, 10 rule. So 60 percent of your time is going to be um, you know, really talking to people, letting people know that you're looking for an internship or a job or a co-op, and then doing those informational interviews, career conversations with people. I'll talk about that in just a second. 30% of your time is actually going to be online, applying, actually submitting an application, following up with employers that you've already applied with. You know, when you apply for a job, you want to contact the hiring manager if you can or find someone in HR on LinkedIn and let them know you applied. You can go and send them a message and say, hi, I've applied on this date. Here's my application ID number or my job ID number from my application. Just wanted to follow up with you and let you know that I've applied. I wanted to virtually introduce myself. Um, and then 10% of your time is going to be like, you know, updating your resume, tailoring your resume to every position you apply for, tailoring your cover letter to every position you apply for. That's going to take up about 10% of your time, but you can see here the majority of your time is through networking. You've, I've mentioned this a couple times, informational interviewing or career conversations. This is really, when you think about the 60% of your time, this is this is where you're going to be spending that 60% of your time is in the form of career conversations. So the way to do this is you're going to try and find UNC Charlotte alumni on LinkedIn, maybe former colleagues, maybe friends and family, peers, faculty, anybody who's in your inner circle. And you're going to ask them for 15 to 20 minutes of their time for either a virtual Zoom call or a phone call. One of the beauties of COVID is that everybody knows how to use these virtual platforms now. And you're going to ask them in that 20 minute conversation a series of questions. We actually have questions for you in our career guide on page 14. You can see here on page 14, we talk about informational interviewing how to find people, how to prepare, and then sample questions you can ask. We even give you a sample blurb right here to help you ask for an informational interview. So you can ask someone via LinkedIn message or email. And this is where you are going to, you know, again, spend most of your time networking. You're going to ask them for if they have a referral of anybody else you should be talking to. You're not going to ask them to give you an internship or a job in that conversation. It's really more just like you're looking to network. You're looking to grow your network. You're looking to learn from them. What was their experience like? And just keep doing this. So the more informational interviewing you do, the, the more chances you're going to have at increasing your capital. And so there is actual proof that the more informational interviewing you do, 
the more likely you are going, it, it will lead to something. So just applying online, just relying on your resume, that can only go so far. But doing co career conversations through the form of informational interviewing, that is really where you're going to start to see that uh, return on your investment. So let everybody you know, let them know you're looking for an internship, a co-op, or a job. Send an email. Start letting friends and family know. You never know who knows somebody. Talk to your faculty. Use LinkedIn. That is your best friend. So like that 60% of your time, a lot of that is going to be spent on LinkedIn looking for UNC Charlotte alumni or people who work at a target company of yours. Go to those info sessions and career fairs and follow up with those recruiters within 24 hours of those events. So I want to take you to um, I want to take you to LinkedIn now uh, just so that you can you know see how useful this resource is. Um, I'm not going to go real deep in it, but I just want to show you up here in this search bar. If you put in UNC Charlotte up here, University of North Carolina, Charlotte, it's going to bring you to the LinkedIn alumni page. Click on the alumni tab. And from here, you'll notice there are tons of alumni on here. You can search where they work, where they lived, click next, what they do, what they're skilled at, what they studied. So you can actually specify a certain major. So we'll just use mechanical engineering. And from here, you'll notice that it takes the alumni list down a little bit. And as you scroll down, it's going to populate that list of mechanical engineering alumni. These are people that you can be networking with. These are people you can be reaching out to to ask, hey, can I do an informational interview with you? I see that you work, you know, at XYZ company that I'm really interested in. I would love to just pick your brain. So that's what we mean by informational interviewing and using LinkedIn to network. So I want to pause the video again and do another activity. I want you to log into your LinkedIn or create and create a LinkedIn account if you haven't already and go ahead and visit the UNC Charlotte alumni page and identify 10 alumni that you could invite for a career conversation this month. And so the hope is that after this presentation, you will go back and reach out to those 10 alumni and you can use that little blurb from the career guide to help you in your wording on how to ask for this, but I want you to pause the video and find 10 alumni from the alumni page that you could invite for a career conversation this month. Um, then the other thing I want to remind you is anytime you apply somewhere, you want to follow up. So usually we say about two weeks is a good window. If you haven't heard anything, then you can inquire sort of where they are in their hiring process. Let them know you're still very interested. Um, and then maybe, you know, if they do get back to you, you can ask when might you hear back. I would say you only really need to follow up one time, either email or LinkedIn. Email, email is most ideal if you can, if you have their email address. If you don't have a hiring manager's email, then try to find someone on LinkedIn that you can follow up with. We've kind of hit on all this, but attending those events is so, so important. And just a couple things I want to remind you of, some things I've seen happen with students is giving up or not applying to enough places, having a bad attitude. So a job search, internship search, co-op search, it's tiring. You know, you can get jaded very quickly if you feel like you've been doing a lot of work and you're not getting, you know, a lot of callbacks. The thing I can say is don't let that bad attitude bleed through because the employer will start to, it will shine through in interviews. And so come, come see your career coaches. We can give you a pep talk. We can help you identify gaps, maybe help you see what you could be doing differently. Um, so really try and avoid that bad attitude. Um, I've also seen people send out job search tools that have mistakes and errors. Please, please don't do this. It's so um, easy to get help here on campus through the Career Center, and you get to use our services for life. So just make sure you're utilizing what's available to you. Um, I've also seen students think that one lead is enough, and they felt like they had a great conversation with that employer at the career fair, but then they never hear back. So keep the momentum going. Don't stop. Really maximize your time and creating that target list. Um, I've also seen people not take interviews seriously enough. Practice, practice, practice. And then don't just limit your search to only one type of job, very specific job, or one location if possible. If you're able to, you know, be flexible in your geographic location, that's always great. 
So the final activity that I want you to pause the video for is to identify three things you have learned from this presentation that can help you in your next steps towards your search. So pause the video and write down three things that you have learned that you plan to do next as a result of this presentation. Okay, we did it. You survived. Um, I want you to have uh, the resources to access all of our services. So career.charlotte.edu is our website. That's where you can go to um, find the link for Hire a Niner to schedule an appointment with your career coach. It's where you can go and um, start a virtual drop-in if you want. It's also where you can find a lot of information about the different resources that we have. There's a lot of tools and, and tips right there at your fingertips. Um, we are also on all social media platforms, so I encourage you to follow us and please come see us. We're here to help you. We're friendly people, no judgment. We want to be advocates for you and help you learn how to best brand, brand and market yourself. So do come see us and thank you so much for participating today.